All right, we're gonna continue on here with the work on this single cab, uh, on this part of the cabin chassis at least. Then we'll be getting on to the lift here pretty soon. I would just have do me doing other things right now, kind of taking a little bit of a short break here and back working on it now. So uh, I've got my Audi running, my cars seem to be working perfect. Air conditioning's not dialed in. Wanted to make sure all that stuff was taken care of before the heat hits me. So that's what I've been doing. And then, uh, anyway, uh, what needs to be done now is I noticed again the fact time when I got it running, the fuel pump was leaking a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that off and rebuild it. And then we're gonna see if we can dial in the carburetor a little bit better. It was. You know, it's it. Okay, remember this is. If you notice, this is leaning a little bit. This was a six volt um, car originally, and the generator is smaller on those. And this is a later model carburetor, so the early carburetors had more room in there, and you could actually just go right to twelve volts on them, no issues. But if you put the later model carburetor on it. A lot of times they have stuff that kind of sticks out a little bit. So a lot of guys bent the uh, intake manifolds to make them fit. I don't think this one here needs to be bent on this one. But um, I've seen it before, you know. And this one had a 34 pick 3.4 on it before. Or 30, 32, 30 pick 3.4 on it before. And now it has a empty carb on it. So I don't know. Anyway. Uh, but they're not too bad. The MP ones work, you know. They they have issues again, you know. But a few of them do. But they're not a bad alternative, you know. They do work. I've had no, not that many problems with them. So I need to get figure out what the jets are in there. It's actually pretty easy to do on these because this is a thirty picked one, I think. And all I have to do is take this off right here, and the jets right inside there versus trying to. Put a screwdriver in usually i take the carb off to do that on the those ones but it might also be the float level i noticed it was really rich and it might be the float level is a little bit too high because the carburetor is tilted so i gotta take a look at all that stuff so we can dial that in and get it running a little bit better and then uh, i gotta get an air cleaner for it so i'm gonna get that on there I don't know if I'll get that in this video, but that's going to come around. And then once I get the engine dialed in, then I'll probably start doing the hydraulic stuff on this, getting it assembled. Uh, I'm going to probably need to replace those two hoses there. Uh, they're pretty old. You know, I don't think they're cracked or anything. Let's look at them. Yeah, these are old, but they're not cracked. They're in pretty pliable condition. Probably be okay, actually, but... Well, this is the return hose, so that's not going to be what we have on that. Or is it the return? It must be because it has a clamp on it. That's a decrepit, hard old thing. Yeah, it's got clamps on both ends. So that I could use power steering return hose. I think I can get that. I'll use that. And then this side probably should be replaced. You know, yeah, you put your life in your hands when you get in this thing. Better be right. So, I can start cleaning this thing up and get it ready to put in. I don't really want it in the way until after the engine's running, you know, right, pretty good. And then I'll get this thing here ready to go in. So, we'll work on that. I'll just talk to you guys a little bit later. We'll get on this carburetor rebuild. Or, not carburetor, but the uh, fuel pump.
All right, I want to show you this. <clears throat> if you're doing one of these fuel pumps, uh, you know, I've never re rebuilt one of these. <clears throat> we used to just throw them away. This is like an 80s pump right here because it has the plastic, okay? And they're, but they're completely reusable now. The kits are probably more expensive than a new pump and I don't know if the new pumps are any worse or better than these kits are. But I like the looks of these old pumps. But to get this in here, you you have to take this to take this apart. You have to take the spring out first, and then push down on this, and then this little lever. We can work it out of there. Because what it does is this hooks on this thing like that inside there. And so if you're taking one apart, you may not know. I've seen guys try to take them apart before and go, hey, I don't know what's wrong. I can't get it apart. I, I think I rebuilt one years ago. I used to make kits for them. But we didn't, usually we just, they had these style ones and they were fine. So there was no need to rebuild them. And they were cheap. I think a new one was 10 bucks or something crazy like that. Okay, so now, before, I think, I don't know if it's before or after I put this on here, the spring goes in. Now, that's the hardest part is to get the pin back to line up to go through the right place. So, I'll play around with that. I'm going to knock the pin in place, and then I'll bring it back in. All right, so we got that thing in there. What I had to do is just take a screwdriver and just play around with it and finally get the spring in last because if you put the spring in first you're going to be fighting with trying to get that pin to line up that went together pretty easily um, on the earlier ones they had a, a little door right here with two screws and you could go in there and put the spring in after easily and then but these are a little tougher still i don't know everybody goes well these are better than the new ones yeah, i don't know because <laughs> Chinese made uh, kit, Chinese made pump. What's the difference? You know, I don't know. I'm sure, it's Taiwan or Chinese or something. It ain't German. It's even available anymore, German. Just gonna do my little cleanup. Get the gasket off of there. A little more gasket on there. You're nice and clean and I'll put the new diaphragm on and a new gasket diaphragm here gasket on top and then spring on there I don't know should I use the German spring or the Chinese one I mean, this is a real brosol so that was the original replacement our brazilian i believe this is sorry uh, it's not real german yeah there it is made in brazil yeah it was the german ones had the little door right here i explained brazilian brosol i don't know All right, so I'm warming it up out there. Um, I was rebuilding this thing 
and I've just not had very good luck. So, first time I did it, it I took it apart and I put it together. Uh, I put the vacuum gauge on it and it wasn't pumping. That's because when I cleaned it out, a little bit of carburetor spray had some old fuel in there and stuff and the check valve got stuck. So I blew, took it apart to blow it apart, blow it, to blow it out again. And lo and behold, when I put it back together, now the diaphragm leaks. So it just blows fuel right out of here. We'll, we'll take another look at that one another day. I'm not messing with that right now. This is about the third time I had to take it apart, so I'm just done with it for now. I just put one of these on there for now. I have, I usually have an extra one. This was an extra one. I had to change the push rod to the alternator style, and it works. These kits can be really finicky when you put the screws in. You have to hold this thing up. You have to kind of deweight it down here, and then put the screws in. If you get them in a little bit, there you go. You can see the nice squirt out of the side of there. Um, that's how bad it was. Um, and if, if you if you don't do that and you put the screws in, and I, I you know I did that, but it just took it apart enough times that you get like one time. If you if you don't get it right the first time, usually the second time it's not going to work. So I had to take it apart I think three times to figure it out what was wrong, and uh, that was one time too many. And the diaphragm, the brand new diaphragm is junk. So that's the way they're made now. And they're not like the old ones. They don't even look the same as these. And this one didn't look bad, but it did leak a little bit. So it would probably work if I ran it again and just tighten it up a little bit more. I just was having a little bit of seepage coming out of the sides of it. So anyway, and this is Brazilian. So the German ones might rebuild a little bit easier than the Brazilian ones. The brilliant zone was working quite. Alright, so I did a little more adjusting on the carburetor. You know, I don't know what was going on before, but I changed the main jet. I wish I had a 125. I think that's about right for the 40 horse. I have a 120 and it. it's probably a little bit lean. Which uh, we had a 130 in it, it was just too much. Plus the choke wasn't working right. Still not working very good, but I have to have it cold again to test it, to set it. A lot of people set the choke too tight. You should always have it kind of just a little bit looser than what you might think. It should never shut all the way. So what I usually do is things to check the engine is uh you run your air mixture screw in and it should be you run it in until the engine starts to stall a little bit then you back it out till it doesn't then maybe another quarter turn after that uh, and that's where I got it set up right now but if it if you run your screw all the way in and it doesn't change then that means your 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 uh, your jet right here this is your pilot jet your idle jet is not the right size it might be too rich that's usually the case if it's doing that uh, and the other thing you want to do is check because an old trick we used to use was if the pilot jet was too small we would try backing them out a little bit and then peening it to keep them uh, to make it work better and I was with the old, if you had an old throttle shaft that was worn on your carburetor, we used to do that a lot of times. We'd back it out. So when I checked this one, it, was, it wasn't adjusting. Okay, I was running it all the way in, and it, and it wasn't changing the air mixture. So what I did is I tightened that up. I realized that that was set up loose. So I tightened that all the way in, and then, then when I adjusted the the carburetor that I could I could adjust it. I could turn it all the way in, engine starts to stall a little bit, back it out till it doesn't, turn it another quarter turn. And now I just need to find an air cleaner for it. 
probably idle it down a little bit more. Linkage isn't the best on these empty ones, but it does work fine. This is probably bent. I think it is. Because it won't idle down. That's alright. Looks like I actually find it where it is right now. That's how I like them running. See what it feels like inside. Yeah, it comes back down to idle. Fast idle. It's working. All right. Another couple things you can learn from this is when you're doing your jetting or you want to see if your car, if you're not sure if it's lean or rich and something like that, you can always just take your hand and just put it over the carburetor. And if you start to feel the engine rev up a little bit as you get more more closed, and then of course when you get it covered up all the way, yeah, the engine will you'll probably stall. But if you start to move your hand and if you can Put more of your hand on there and it starts to stall then you know it's rich that's how we used to do it a lot of times just to kind of see where we're at just a backyard way to adjust these old solexes now every car was this carburetor back when i was younger there was no fuel injected hardly anything we had the rabbits came out fuel injected and they, people used to say they had the worst fuel injection i thought it was actually really good it was simple the only issue you ever had with those things was the plunger would get uh, dirt in there and you just take a, somebody go, man, my car runs like crap. Can you tune it up? And I guess get it, one, take the little lid off, or the little part of the thing off, clean it and take a car carburetor spray and move the plunger up and down. I said, go drive it and bring it back. And they bring it back. And they go, wow, you tuned it up. <laughs> I know, I just clean your thing out. Then, they, you know, people would learn that it was easy, really easy injection to fix. But uh, these carburetors are actually really simple. You know, the, the jetting the main jet is, you know, I was talking to a guy and he says, hey, my, my spark plugs are black or, or, you know, so I put a leaner main jet and I'm like, dude, they, you don't want them kind of black. You don't want them like gray. Your spark plugs need to be like pretty, almost charcoal, charcoal gray black color. If they're if there's if you can see any of that white on there, man, that's too lean. So uh, you can usually tell that by just getting behind the vehicle when it's running and kind of smell the exhaust and you rev it up, put it at a cruise speed. If you want to know if your main jet's too lean, you just run it up to cruise speed and see if it starts to stink really bad. You know, if it stinks really bad, it's usually hydrocarbons. That's from being too lean. If it's too rich what happens is it kind of burns your eyes really bad i mean when the choke's on and it's running really rich you sit behind your car and you don't have a smell much it just kind of burns your eyes because it's high it's carbon dioxide which is a odorless gas right that's too much carbon dioxide that's what created when the engine's running too rich so if you get behind it and it's burning your eyes it's probably too rich if it's stinks really bad kind of a terrible smell just sounds just smells horrible um, you know the way you can also replicate that is that let's say you don't know what that smells like just take one of your spark plugs off spark plug wires off and uh, run the engine run with the spark plug wire off it'll tell you what hydrocarbons smell like that a misfire you know is what you're smelling when it's going it's that same smell you know when your points are really going bad you got your and it's misfiring a lot if you're you run you get behind your car and you're like man something's wrong and it's put you know spitting and sputtering and everything else and you can smell that smell behind your car that's hydrocarbons that's what um a lean misfire is so if you got a really stinky smell probably too lean if it's burning your eyes out it's probably too rich you kind of want to find the happy medium in there you know it's, and then, you know, using your spark plugs is really not a very good way to check it on a Volkswagen. 
they should be pretty darn black. Not wet, but black, you know. You don't want them to get super light gray, and they're, then they're way too lean. So, anyway, that's how I've done it for years. Never had issues with my cars running too lean. And you can use the exhaust sensor. We I've used all that stuff. You know, I used to use smog machine years ago. I put put the tailpipe emissions in there and try and get it around I forget what this percentage was I think it was like 1% or something like that it was pretty good you know for straight tailpipe emissions I forget what we used to I used to have it all down with the exhaust analyzer as well but I don't do that anymore don't have a smog machine like we did years ago we used to have the ones with the old the old gauges you know ones that would go up and down like that so anyway, the old girl's, I think, running pretty good now. I just got to get my air cleaner. I can put that on here, then I can start working a little bit more on it. And anyway, we'll see. If I remember right, when we were using the analyzer, I remember you'd lean it up and watch the hydrocarbon start to run up. And then you would start to richen it up again, and then you try to get them to balance to where the hydrocarbons, let's say, 1% and 1,000... Um, something like that on the hydrocarbons in the CO and then you'd kind of try and get them to balance so if, if it ran up to you'd want to make sure that you didn't have really high hydrocarbons and then have really low CO then you knew it was lean so you we'd play around with it till they balanced that's what I remember doing so anyway the numbers I don't remember exactly but Something like that. I think it was about 1%, 1,000, something like that. Depends. And every engine is a little bit different. Especially the bigger ones might be worse emissions than that. So anyway, that's how we used to do it back in the old days. All right, so let's take a little cruise here. Guess we got a speedometer now. Let's see if we hear any weird noises still. Well, that's as quiet as a mouse, actually. Sixty kilometers. Five or something, I can't remember. It's been a while. Beach the way it's running right now. I'd say this thing's pretty dialed in. The last time I drove was when I drove it with you guys, so 
I've just been doing work on it. Getting all the little stuff done. Looks like the gas gauge is working. I just start to go up a little bit when I run around the corner. Kind of bounced up, so there's some gas in it, not much, but enough to make this little loop. Yeah, it's running really good. Got rid of that noise. I think that noise was actually the bumper, if you guys remember the noise I had. It'll do 100 kilometers, maybe. That's 60. Probably. Just gotta get that air filter. Get this hole fixed. There. Still looking for my. Uh, tap that's why I haven't done it yet I bought two new taps for that thing and I can't find them right now oh it's drum brake holy crap that hill would have been hard with the lift on it go up there this time of night because there might be a little copper waiting for people to run the stop sign he might see these bright bumpers and start asking questions One 
mirror now. Alright, turn signals quit. Right one works. Left one stopped working. Don't see these very often, do you? <laughs> Don't see anything like this come by here very often, do you? Transmission just was amazing. Yeah, this thing drives good. We'll see how next Long Beach comes. I don't think I want to take it Friday or Saturday. I gotta get a little more things dialed in. I wanna get the paint buff. That's what's coming up next. We'll buff the paint a little bit. Finish that up. Well, it's inside the garage where it's nice and cool. That stock muffler is just something else, man. I'll tell you, that thing is so quiet, I can't hear the engine hardly. Well, I got to tell you guys, that was pretty enjoyable, actually. Uh, no rattles and bumps. It's just nice, smooth driving. Wasn't hearing this door flopping like it used to. That stayed shut, didn't it? You guys who are watching that, that latch looks better. Still haven't do no more adjusting to that thing. Just gotta finish buffing this thing out. That's gonna be coming up. I think I'm gonna just finish polishing it, get it all done. Put a little more gas in it to make sure it didn't run out. <laughs> um, yeah, the roof needs to be buffed. Still, this side here is only about halfway done. I need to get that done. So that's what I'll do next. And yeah, the horn works. I don't know what happened to the signals. I gotta find out what that happened there. You know, all the bugs are still there, so gotta work those out. I gotta find this thing too. I, I, I had them sitting there, those stupid stainless steel things, and I don't know what happened to them. I keep on looking for them and find something else, and then I put that on. You know, it's like I look for that part, and I go, "Oh, I'm looking for that part. Oh, I got this part. I'll go put that on." So. Just stuff like that's going on. That's how I've been just kind of piecing it along until finally it'll be together. And then I'll start working on that thing there. That's going to happen for sure. It's just, uh, I don't know how I'm going to work it out. How I'm going to do it. I'll probably just do little sections of it and strip it, sand it, paint it one little section, then do another little section. You know, just do like a few little sections and then done 
until it's done. Take the, all the pipes off one area and then just fix them all and then put them back on. That sort of thing. I don't know about rebuilding the cylinders yet. I don't know. Ah, that's going to be difficult. I don't know if I'm going to find seal kits for it or if I should just try putting hydraulic fluid in it and see if they work or if they don't leak too bad. Then I'll just leave them alone. Well, that might be the case. Those cylinders last a long time. One of those things. These might be still okay. But then I go and paint them up and then what, you know, I don't know. I gotta take them off and then make sure the bolts aren't stripped out and all that, I guess. You know, heat them up with the torch and take them off, put them back on, at least reassemble it. I guess and paint it and then just figure, well, if it has to be rebuilt, then I'll go through it at that time. It's just the chasing of the parts, I don't know. I don't want to take one apart and then not be able to find parts for it. I'm sure I could, but it, you know, it could be a pretty tough challenge. You never know. See what's in there. They're probably going to leak anyway, you never know. Well, they probably won't. Because they've been up all the time. And that one's been closed all the time, so it's probably... Been, you know, if they're rusty on the end, that's when they start to leak. That's probably going to be all right. We'll start working on this thing. I got to find somebody to give me a deal on a bunch of hoses. I'm sure not going to the hose man. Way too expensive there. I'll find a better place. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Please like, share, and subscribe. Hear your comments on this video, and uh, hopefully you liked it.